What's up, you guys? Sorry, <laughs> ready to get water. How are we doing? Uh, give me a. Um... Yeah, you super broke the hoot. <laughs> um. Yeah, dude, there's definitely broke Kahoot, but here's the thing. Um, so he, I have the the Kahoot, and we're gonna play it at ten. <laughs> so we're gonna do it again um, with a smaller group. Um, so it's the same one, except that, except that, kind of. Well, so he did the Kahoot. He made the Kahoot, and then I wanted to do a live session tonight about like a freebie one. And I was trying to figure out what to do it about. And I knew everyone was going to be playing the Kahoot. So I was like, all right, I'll do a live one after explaining the questions. Um, but the, but since Kahoot broke, um, we're just going to play it. But the, the only thing is we might break it again because <laughs> there's 500 students registered for the 10 PM session, which is like, <laughs> We've never come close. So I, like at a certain point, like on in Demio, I was limited at 250 people inside at one time. And um, I just had to upgrade so that we can get more than 250 because we're going to break it all. We're just going to break Demio. We're going to break Kahoot. So whatever. Um, yeah, by break it, we mean just like the glitches. Whatever. So you guys come in at 10. Yeah, we'll do it at 10. So we'll end here. As soon as this is over, join the other one so that you can get a seat because it is going to be like tight. Um, and this one will also be kind of kind of tight, but we're going to make it work. All right. So we're going to before before Kahoot. First, we're going to spend some time on DBQ LEQ. All right. So you've got, it's the same exact stuff as before. Let me just pull out my stuff. Same exact, um, same practice exam. So you can, I can put the, here we go. This is the practice exam. Hopefully you had a chance to just kind of look over the documents just cause that'll make it easier for us when we spend time talking about it. Oh, scrolling down. Um, and then this is the DBQ with women in politics. Yeah, I believe so. Yep, communist movement affected women's struggle for rights in the 20th century. This is a really good one. It's a really good DBQ. Um, cool. So if you didn't read all the documents, that's okay. You know, you're not gonna like get, you're not gonna like lose credit for tonight. Um, but it just will make it a little bit more. You might want to just kind of skim through them quickly, and then we'll um, in this document the same one. The same document that we've been working on, we will continue working on the DBQ in here. Is this going in the grade book? Yep, this is gonna count for your grade for sure. Is there any way to skip forwards or backwards in the recordings of previous live sessions? Um, yeah, so when I upload them onto, on, on, when you like log into Fiveable, they're just videos. So you should be able to skip back and forth. Um, but this right here, obviously you can't because this is live. Um, all right, so. All right, so DBQ. Okay, so we're gonna try to time ourselves here. So we're gonna try to get this DBQ outlined in 30 minutes, maybe 40. All right. Um, Twi do you think Twitch streaming is better? <laughs> no, guys, I'm not teaching in the classroom. You guys are literally my students right now. So I don't have any students, you're it. Um, Okay, so DBQ, let's look at this DBQ. So the question is, evaluate the extent to which communist movements affected women's struggle. Um, yep, yeah. hang on. You want me to give you emoji grades? It's kind of funny actually. Um, can you go over the POV? Yes, yep, 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 and thank you for sending that. Um, so, all right, so here's the prompt. Uh, evaluate the extent to which communist movements affected women's struggle for rights in the 20th century. So which reasoning skill is this? Causation. Good job, Tom. Nice and quick. Right. So obviously this word here, affected, we're going to bold it and underline. That is what's telling us that it's, it's, um, 
Are you going to send the document? Here, you can have it. It's here. You can just um, view it. Um, okay, so this is causation. We're looking at um, how did communism affect women's struggle for rights, right? How did communism affect women's struggle for rights? So I just, I'd like to rewrite the question like that. It just like helps me like understand what the question's asking, right? So now I have something really specific that I'm looking for in the documents. So I really recommend that you do that. Um, you just have to be careful that you, you keep the wording of the prompt if you're gonna do that, you know? Um, do we also have to say how much it affected it? Um, yes, you do, right? You have to, cause it's saying evaluate the extent to which, and so, but in terms of how did, I can answer that as it didn't. Um, right. So it says, yes. So I'm not writing the thesis yet. Right. So I'm not, right now, I'm not trying to think about what I'm going to argue. I'm just trying to figure out what the question is asking. And so first I need to be able to answer this question and then I can answer to what extent. Right. I just need to like some, some bullet points of like, just really quick, like what, what are some ways that it affected it? And then I can form an argument. Um, yes, so we'll go we'll go through all the pieces first. So remember though, first thing you want to do is understand the prompt, make sure you know what it's asking for, and then um, and then you're, we're gonna go through all the documents, okay? So we're gonna go through every single document, just how does the document answer that question? All right, and then we'll come back around and look at different pieces of it. Or actually maybe we'll do both at the same time for the sake of time. So let's look at document one. Document one is Alexandra Kolontai, Russian communist revolutionary and member of the Bolshevik government. This is an autobiography, Soviet Union, 1926. So in terms of this document, if you've already read this document, based on her experience, how did communism affect women's rights for struggle? So if we kind of like jump in here, so if you've got an answer to that, pop it in the chat. Um, but if, you know, we're just kind of looking at this, 1905, she's talking about the Bloody Sunday Revolution, 19 in the first one, um, already required a reputation of economic and social literature. And in those stirring times when all energies were utilized, it turned out that I had become popular as an orator. Um, yet in the period, um, sorry, I got sidetracked. In the period, I realized for the first time how little our party concerned how little our party concerned itself with the fate of women in the working class, and how meager was its interest in women's liberation. Hmm. To be sure, a very strong bourgeois bourgeois women's movement was already in existence in Russia, but my Marxist outlook pointed me with the overwhelming clarity that women's liberation could take place as the result of a new social order. All right, so. Yep, I had above all set myself the task of winning over women's workers in Russia to socialism and at the same time of working for the liberation for women. All right, so let's think about this document. So let's answer that. Help me answer this question. Based on document one, how did communism affect women's struggle for rights? So this is Kolontai Bolshevik women. So can we assume feminine and masculine names to mean women and men? Yes, I think you can. You can make a, a, a that, that assumption, I think. So uh, document writers essentially advocating, um, essentially advocating working women's rights to piggyback on the overall communist movement. Yes, I think this is arguing that communism meant to support women's rights. Well, but does communism support women's rights or are women using the same tactics to promote their rights because there's a difference, right? Like, does she feel like communism are, is actually supportive of human rights or of women's rights, right? Because if you see this right here, that that thing that I had highlighted, little how little our party concerned itself with the fate of women in the work, women of the working class, right? So she's saying communists, the communists aren't so worried about women's rights. However, the same, I can use the same tactics, right? I can look, learn what I, use what I've learned in fighting for a communist revolution to fight for a, a, a women's revolution. Uh, women played an important role in the revolution. Yeah, that's also an important point, right? So like communism didn't care much 
about women's rights, but women played a role in the revolution and used similar tactics in the feminist revolution, right? And so she's saying they should utilize it. She's saying a communist revolution could pave the way for, in well, she's not necessarily saying a communist revolution could pave the way, um, but she's saying, um, like, she's definitely winning over women in Russia to socialism, but at the same time, she's pushing a feminist agenda too. So she doesn't see them as hand in hand. They can, they can go hand in hand, but they're not going to happen because of the other. Does that make sense? It's like a, uh, what do they call that? It's a, yeah, revolutionary ideology is Marxism type thing. Well, revolutionary ideology is, yeah, but it, it applies to other things too. She's saying the tactics and type of change could further the movement. Right. Um, okay. So, you know, in terms of a document like that, you know, could you in 1926 give some kind of context? Like what might you say for context? Just to like do, we'll just do a little bit of this. Um, and I'm not going to do this for every document, but you know, yeah, World War One had ended recently, and more importantly, the revolution in Russia had just happened, right? Bolshevik Revolution in 1917, World War One ended. Um, they had just overthrown lack of men in the workforce, right? Gender imbalance because of the war. I think we did a similar document in class, state something around the idea that it was supported women's rights. Uh, yeah. Great Depression, not yet. Talk about... Yeah. Okay. So that's something, these are all stuff you could say for context, right? And for POV, you have her as a woman experiencing, um, you know, like marginalized, uh, experiencing a lack of rights, but she's also a revolutionary, right? Learning leadership and tactics and you could use that as part of your pov um you know i don't know who's she writing to here this is an autobiography so i don't know uh do we have to use all the documents and say what document you're referring to yes you need to use all the documents because your points come from using six documents and so if you use less then you get them wrong you're not you're just giving up points um i'm still confused as to how to address POV. Okay, so if you were gonna give some evidence from this document, you would you know, refer to this essentially, and then you could say, exactly. That's exactly the like sentence frame, right? Um, put it here. As a, and then like attach yourself to one of those things. You could talk to her, you could, you could analyze the fact that she's a woman or analyze the fact that she's had a role in the revolution. As a woman, Alexander Kolontai would feel strongly about the lack of women's rights or the lack of like, you know, leadership from the communist movement in the feminist movement because she's like directly experiencing this lack of rights. Is it true you can provide POV for every doc and only need three for the point? Yeah, so you only need to, you only have to do hip correctly three times. You don't even have to do POV. You could do purpose all three times. You could do a purpose, a context, and a, an audience, right? It doesn't have to be POV. Or you could do all POV or all anything. And if you, yeah, I mean, if you, so if you do it more than three times, it just, it just doesn't, it's just like extra. Um, and so you want to do it more than three times though, because you want the point. So if you try it five times, then you're more likely to get it correctly. POV means point of view. Okay, so maybe in the essence of time, we're not gonna be able to go, go through all. Mm. All right, you guys, so here's the deal. Let me give you options here. We can either just, just go through every document like this, or I can sort of skip ahead and just talk more about like a general outline. You tell me. And then the LEQ will just kind of talk about. General outline, okay, general outline. All right, so you want to, so once you've figured out um, 
exactly what the question is asking and what information you're looking for. Like this is important. You just kind of want to go through, right. You'll just want to go through and do this for each document. At first, you'll come back around and do this part when you're like actually writing. But you would just want to kind of go through, right? Two, what is two saying? You know, like specifically, how does two answer this question? You know, how does three answer the question? Four, five, six, seven. So for every document, it just in your like blank space that you have, really think about that. Once you have, um, you know, how all the documents answer the prompt, now you are ready for a thesis. So I don't have a thesis written for this um, essay. So just to show you like a general outline, the way that it will go is that in your introduction, you will have context, which will be four to five sentences. So tell me, in terms of an essay like this, what kinds of things would you put in your context? You know, four to five sentences, background information. Think about the, of the like time and place. Probably for everyone, the lagging is annoying. Okay, so you could talk about the Bolshevik revolution. World War One, right? You could talk about, oh, the bread revolt. Yep, you could talk about that. Uh, Marxism. And, you know, most of you guys are just focusing on the idea of communism, but you can also, in your context here, talk about women, right? Women's role in, yeah, there you go, and women's role. You could talk about, yeah, you could just talk about the entire first wave of feminism. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, excuse me, first wave or yeah, okay, so some of the other documents talk about later on, but you can bring in, in your context, you can just lead it in, you know, you can talk about, sure, you could talk about the Enlightenment, you could literally, I, and honestly, that's might be what I would do, like, I would think about, you know, okay, I would think about kind of the story of feminism before the 20th century, right, because the prompt is specific to the 20th century, so I might bring in just sort of like the story for feminism before that, just as like the previously on, you know, like it's, you know, a common theme you're seeing in all of this is just, um, it's just the like background of, sorry, it's the, um, what you're seeing in this is that feminism is happening in every single country, right? It's not unique to one place. Um, what you include in the context probably be at least partially based on your stance. E yes, of course. I agree with you, Jack. So just in the like essence of time, um, you know, these are just some things you could talk about. But that's why I tell you to write your thesis first. So like after you've gone through the documents, you know how they answer it, you know, write a thesis. It like groups up the documents and presents, you know, two to three arguments. And then when you actually start writing, you know what you're going to be talking about. And so you can give a background of anything you want. So in your intro, you'll have your, and I see the question about hip. I will get to hip when I um, come into things. And should you put your opinion? No, you don't need your opinion. It's really not about your opinion. It's about what you can argue, right? Uh, if we could type our essays, yeah. All right, so the, the second part of your intro is your thesis. This is where you actually present present the arguments. Um, oh, talking about China. Yeah, so you can. So you can talk more about just, because this just says communist movements. And so you could talk about the like spread of communism globally. You could totally bring that in. So what I mean by two to three arguments is that your thesis is not going to just say, yes, communism affected feminism, right? You, you would have to actually have two or three reasons to support you. So uh, in this case, your thesis might look like, you know, evaluate the extent to which communist movements affected women's struggle for rights in the 20th century. The communist mo movements 
um, of the 20th century. Like, were, I don't know, were affected by, yeah, X, however, A and B, therefore Y. You can do a, do a thesis in just one or two sentences. Congress of the 20th century affected women's rights because blank, blank, and blank would be enough. You know, something like that. You could have, um, you know, although blank, like although X, comma, Y, and Z, you know, so each one is an argument. Like this is an argument, this is an argument, this is an argument. Does that make sense? Um, there are different ways to format it based on how you're actually going to be, what you're going to argue. The person who got one of four perfect scores on A push emphasized putting documents into two or three categories. Yes, absolutely. So what that's what you're doing here, right? Um, you're going to group up the documents into two or three arguments because you can you can look at the documents and say, okay, so this one's talking about communism not being supportive of feminism. There's another one about veiling, I think, where it's kind of similar, right? Um, and so you just have to sort of find similarities, find patterns. That's how you find, that's how you do it. You just find, so when you think about how the documents answer the question, you need to find patterns between them so that you're not just like document one says this, document two says this, you know? Like find ways that the arguments are, the documents are arguing the same thing. So if you're gonna use this one, you're going to use document one to argue that it it did because it trained women into feminist movements. You know, maybe this one would be similar. I'd have to like read through all of them, you know. This one could be similar, you know, or the, you know, I don't know. Let's see. This one is talking about um, some opportunities for women, but not quite for all types of jobs. Right. So each document, each document should not get their own paragraph. That's because that you're if you're doing that, all you're doing is summarizing the documents and you're not going to get you're missing the whole argumentative aspect. The point of. The point of the DBQ is to take the documents that you're given and to form an argument based on those. And like, don't lose sight of that. You know, I think you get caught up in the paragraphs and the sentence structure and all that stuff. But like the ultimate goal is to here's a set of documents, prove a point using them, you know? Um, so, okay, so let's just keep talking through this. Okay, so you have your introduction. I know you guys are, are definitely, I'm sensing confusion more so tonight than usual, which is not good. Most documents take a stance on something, right? Exactly. Figure out which ones line up and which ones are different from the first category, but have a common thread. The most important part is honestly the categorization and interpretation. Absolutely. I agree. Right. So, you know, that beginning piece is really important. Um, so the next the next paragraph that you should write after your introduction, I this is what I recommend. And this is where, you know, I know some teachers recommend this different, but I recommend putting your complexity paragraph right here. And by complexity paragraph, you have choices over what you can do, but you can do um, synthesis, which is not required, but you can do it. Um, you can have, you know, have your synthesis where this is where you are going to really pick one of your arguments, X, Y, or Z, and show how that development happened before or happened in the, you know, in a future time when this is written. You know, maybe you say... Maybe you pick some other movement that affected the um, a social movement. Maybe you talk about, I don't know, like republicanism of the like 18th century affecting abolition movements. I don't know, something like that. Um, but like for this type of essay, synthesis is kind of hard, right? And so instead of doing synthesis, the other thing you can do is the opposite skill. So this one is causation, but it's asking you about effects. 
And so for this one, you can have, you could do causes, right? You could talk about uh, maybe like the opposite affecting it, right? Maybe you talk about how feminism affected communist movements, something like that. Um, causes of the spread of, you know, something like that. Synthesis slash opposite skill help earn the second amount. Yes, exactly. So the reason why I have you put your complexity paragraph right here would be because it's you're playing a time game. You're trying to get as many points as you can in as little time as possible. So here, this is a point. You know, let's highlight the points. This is a point. And like, you know, don't get it twisted, guys. The whole, like the whole point of you writing the DBQ at this point is to get the points. You know, it's like how many times can I say the word point? It's like you're you have a rubric, you need to play the game. You need to just do the things that they're telling you to do. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be a synthesis or opposite point. Uh, do not get it twisted. Yes, exactly. Like, don't get caught up, so caught up in all the uh, little tiny pieces of this. There's a lot of ways to do this correctly. I'm showing you one way. Your teacher could have shown you something else. You might do something completely different by mistake and still get all the points. As long as you are going into it big picture, you have a job to do. You need to get as many points as you can and as little time as you can. You know, that's that's your job. That's your goal. This is one way to achieve that goal. So you've got your intro, context, and thesis. Complexity is another point, okay? Then you would have your body paragraphs. And how many body paragraphs you have depends on what you're arguing. So if you are arguing X, Y, and Z, then you want three body paragraphs. If you're only arguing Y and Z, then you need two, all right? Um, because ultimately, each of your arguments should include two or three documents. So that's kind of how you get it set up. So you've got body paragraphs will look like a topic sentence. It's literally one way blank and just present one of your arguments, you know, X. Then you have, you know, let's say we're using evidence from document one. Instead of saying in document one, you're saying, you're focusing on the person who's speaking and what they're saying. So, you know, evidence from, from a doc, any doc that won't be a quote, right? Do not quote. There's no reason to quote anything. It just, it's just a complete waste of your time to quote. If you quote, you're not losing points. You're just wasting your time. So paraphrase, yeah, exactly. Paraphrase slash, you know, summarize the document and like place it in your argument. So when I say you need two or three arguments, it's because you're ultimately arguing for this prompt one thing that communist movements affected the women's struggle for rights greatly, but you're presenting like two or three reasons for that. Right. So by when I say it like that, I mean, in terms of like reasons. Um, so this is like one reason, you know, one reason, whatever. Evidence from a document to show to prove your point. Then you have hip. So to, to explain hip, you it's not enough to ever just say Alexander Kolontai said this thing and that's it. You have to give her some proof. You have to give her some, you know, like. We have to be able to, to know whether or not we should trust her because everyone, everyone has bias, every document, every person. And so exactly, establish some credibility with the person. And so you can either say, you know, she wrote this document in 1926. So this is what was going on at that time that helps explain why she said what she said. Or you can say, there's, it's like four options. It's historical context, it's intended audience, purpose, and POV. And you can choose any one of those four ways to establish credibility with the document. Um, you could say, you know, something like this is study is a is published by the United States government in 1961. So you know. Is this totally reliable? Well, 
the United States is in a pretty big battle with the Soviet Union at this time, right? So is it totally reliable? Not necessarily, maybe, you know, but there's there's bias in it. The government wants to make sure that, you know, look, you can see here clearly these numbers are staying stagnant. So there is no, very little or no growth in terms of how many women are in the professional, um, you know, research field. Um, oh my God, sneezes are crazy. And so, you know, that's kind of what you would say for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. So you, you have to, you know, if you're going to use audience, you know that it's going to be Americans who read this. Um, or at least if you, you know, are thinking about point of view, the point of view from the government. Um, all right. So you got to choose one of those. All right. In order to get this point, in order to get this evidence point, you have to do, uh, let's see. What am I doing? I'm opening up the AP history rubrics. So if we look at the DBQ rubric, the evidence points are... I believe they're, they're split, right? So you, in order to earn them, right? So look, you can get one evidence point if you use evidence from three documents. You can get two if you use evidence from six documents. So this is moving you towards a point, but you have to do this correctly six times in order to get that point. Always do all seven, exactly. This you will need three times. So for at least three documents, you need to explain how or why the document's point of view, purpose, historical situation, and or audience is relevant to an argument. So you have to connect that. You got to do that right three times. So, you know, every time you do it, it's getting you towards the point. And so you would want to do this for two to three times. Yes, that's throughout the whole essay. So in this paragraph, let's say you have, let's say you have two documents. So you do evidence, hip, evidence, hip. It's like hip from that, hip from that. Right? And then you want to do outside evidence. So what you should do is outside evidence at least one time per body paragraph. Outside evidence you have to do correctly once in your essay. So it's worth it to, to give it a shot like three times. Um, for outside evidence, you can do it either. So let's say you were talking about the communist revolution, not communism not supporting women's struggle for rights. You would then want to think of another example of that that's not in any of the documents. So, you know, for example, um, I don't know exactly what is in this document, but for example, this guy, Nikolai Chescu, he actually does ban abortion, which would be anti-women's rights. So like that's an example of outside evidence that you could give that helps you make sense of this document. Um, if you think of something else, just like some other example, some other example of even like a feminist example. I mean, you could use what's going on at the same time, right? None of these documents talk about what's going on in capitalist countries. You could use that. Women in STEM, okay. Um, yeah, you could, you could totally do that. You could talk about women getting more roles in that um, or like talk about women's suffrage movements, talk about, you know, really anything that has to do with this like I kind of place it in, kind of think of it as here, you know, and it could, it could even be here. It could even be here, but somewhere in your essay, in your paragraph, that's where you should do it. And if you do it really awesome the very first time, you're going to get it right here. You're going to get it in that paragraph. And so if you've got it, if you've earned the point in your in your body paragraph, that means you've written three paragraphs and you have four points. A four will put you on track to get a three. No problem. Um, and honestly, if you get a four on the DBQ, you're probably even more likely to get a four on the test because the DBQ is worth a lot. 
uh, and that would imply that you know what you're talking about for sure. Um, can we use overlapping points? No. So there's no double dipping. So, so okay. So just to like you know, every body paragraph will go like this times two or three, right? This is a point. This will eventually earn you a point. This will um, eventually earn you a point. So what are we missing? One, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh point is actually structuring it in a way that organizes. Uh, oh no, this is two points. Never mind. That's the LEQ. So this is two points. Okay. We can't use the documents more than once. It's not that you can't, um, you just don't need to, right? Like there's no reason to because of assuming that you used it once and you did it well, then move on because that document won't earn you any more points anymore. Um, like use it until it's done working for you, right? And then be done with it. Um, I feel like, God, I feel like I've been watching too much Jersey Shore. <laughs> oh, that's really real. <laughs> Uh, so we have to, <laughs> sorry, we have to use a different argument each time. You need to use a different argument in each body paragraph. Okay, so you're just using a different reason. Like if you're in a debate, you're not going to keep arguing the same point over and over and over again because the person's just going to be like, okay, we get it, you know. Um, like you need to prove your point in more than one way. All right. Any more questions on DBQ? I mean, from the ones I've seen you guys do so far, uh, you're all you're in good places. I think, you know, don't let the DBQ stress you out more than it has to. You guys are definitely like, you know, think of <laughs> think of yourself as like, you know, how like bears get bigger when they have to attack something. You know, same thing. Like attack the DBQ. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, would you suggest we do hip for all the docs before writing the actual DBQ? I wouldn't. So. I know that in if I'm teaching this class, that's a great strategy um, because ultimately you want to be able to just read it quick and do it in your head. Um, but that's for this test, I wouldn't. I would suggest the first time you go through all the documents, um, I would suggest that you just try to figure out how does this document answer the question and move on and then go back through it in terms of finding HIP. Um, we should do SOAP for all the documents. So you don't even need to do SOAP at all anymore. Um, SOAP was good to help with POV when you had to do that. But now, because you just need one of these things, doing all of SOAP will waste your time because you just don't need to figure out every single thing for each document. Um, what happens if you give incorrect... Oh, wait. Is it worth more... Let me read these in order. Um, is it worth more than the multiple choice? No, multiple choice is worth more than the DBQ. What happens if you give incorrect outside evidence? Yep, so the entire exam is graded on an asset-based model. So they are only looking for the things you are doing correctly. If you do something wrong, it's just as if you didn't do it. Um, be careful though about crossing things out because if you cross it out, it, do, it won't count, even if it's, a, if it's correct. So if there's a chance that you might be right with what you wrote, don't cross it out. Keep it um, and let the reader decide that you're wrong instead of you deciding that, that you're wrong. How do you do additional evidence? So you don't need additional evidence. Additional evidence was like the old rubric. That was like the additional document. Additional evidence just comes with this outside evidence piece. And so you just need to think of some other key term that fits into this argument. You know, and it, it's literally like a person, place, event, concept, document, anything like that, um, that you can, that, that you can include, um, and just write about that. Um, how do you recommend time? Oh, wait, how should you divide your time when doing the DBQ since the time? So, you know, you've got 60 minutes for the DBQ, give yourself 60 minutes to do the DBQ. Um, don't jump to the LEQ until you're done with the DBQ because the, the LEQ is worth 15%. The DBQ is worth 25%. But definitely make sure you have at least 30 minutes left for the LEQ, if not 40 minutes. Um, which should we do first? Do the DBQ first. DBQ is worth more. 
Would it be good to find a missing voice to add in your paragraph? So you don't necessarily need to think of it as a missing voice. You can think of it as just missing evidence. You know, what's a missing, what's a key term that could have been one of these documents? And just, and just do it like that. Uh, do they tell you when the hour's up? They should. They might, they might actually, the in-between. They might give you a suggestion. Depends on who your proctor is. Not all proctors are the same or are reliable. Um, according to Barron's book, a good DBQ is four to five pages. So don't worry about page length. Don't worry about paragraph length. And honestly, don't really listen to Barron's advice for the actual test. They've, they're they really good for the history pieces of it. But even that, that book has incorrect rubrics for this test because this rubric was updated in November. And so those books are all wrong when it comes to the DBQ in like, terms of what points you actually have to do. Um, so don't worry about, like I said before, don't worry about quant exactly quality over quantity. So do it like this, write your body paragraphs, make sure, make it so that every sentence you write is helping you earn one or more points. Um, and, you know, if you, if it takes you five, six paragraphs, great. If you can do it all in three or four, great, go wild. Um, I mean, I've read, I've read DBQs that earned all the points in I've read ones as long as like six, seven paragraphs that earned all the points and as short as three or four that earned all the points. The DBQ is worth seven points, seven points. All right, let's look at the LEQ while we still have a little bit of time before I have to wrangle 500 students. Whew, I'm a little nervous for this, gonna be a little crazy. Um, all right, so remember that in the LEQ, you're going to get, and this one is not even correct with this. Oh, no, it is. You're going to get three prompts. You have to share, um, you have, sorry, you have to write one, okay? All of the prompts are going to look the same, and I don't even know if this one does that. So let me just show you, um, this was the, because that one, let me push exam. Um, let me just show you the released essays from last week's A push test, just so you can see the structure of the LEQs, because this is what they'll actually look like. Even on that one is not quite it. Um, okay. So if I just scroll down to the LEQs, uh, you'll be able to see like this is how this is exactly the same setup as yours will be. Um, although who knows what the topic will be? Come on, that's probably why I'm, I'm lagging so much. Maybe my internet's messed up. Not good timing for that. Okay, well. Basically, the time will change, the time period will change. But see, this isn't true for here. Um, how globalization, yeah, these are, this is stupid. Um, okay, hold on. Ugh. This is probably how you all felt during the Kahoot, about ready to throw your phone, throw your computer. The DBQ, yeah, seriously. Like this this page right now is like everyone's mood. <laughs> okay, okay, finally. All right, so just to show you what these will look like, these were on the test. So as you can see, literally the everything about this, these three prompts are the same, except that um, except the time period, right? All they're doing is changing out this and like the little topic, but it's all like economic and it's all time period change, right? You have one time period here, one, another time period here and a third one here. Yours will look the same. Um, this is how they're going to look though. This is the best, this is the best thing that you can use. Can you use one from for synthesis like like yeah right like if you're if you answered this question if this is talking about the civil war changing the united states economy 
then why not compare it to mercantilism or technological innovation? That's brilliant. You should totally do that. Um, okay, so how long do these have to be? Same thing, you guys. All you're trying to do is get as many points as you can. So it's as long as it takes to do that. Um, the setup for this is about the same. Seriously? You guys, this is, I'm going crazy here. This just logged me out. Facebook logged me out today. It just like, I know. Um, can you hear it? It's because of this, it's because of this like Twitter thing. I should shut that off. Um, do you need a conclusion? Yeah, well, this would be awesome if I could actually type in here anymore. It just like logged me out. Okay, so, oh my God. All right, let's just talk about the LEQ. So clearly this is not, I'm just gonna click out. <laughs> clearly that is not working. Okay, so here's the thing. The, yeah, so Dylan put together outlines for both essays that are super useful. You can use those and they use the same setup that I have talked about, right? So your LEQ is set up almost the same way as your DBQ. It's in your intro, you have context, you have your thesis, same, same points the the you know the actual like rubric language is the exact same um everything is the same and then you have body paragraphs that prove your point um yeah you should totally post it in in the kahoot live that's about to happen and your your document won't crash google is better than some of these other systems um all right so give me some questions about the leq so i can't really go over the one that was in there because my computer is not working for me either. So tonight is a night of technology working against us, but also for us, because here we are, right? Um, so give me your questions about the LEQ and I will answer them. So that's what I'll do for the next like few minutes and then I'll, I gotta jump over the other one. Yeah, how many do we have to do? You have to do one. So there's gonna be three options. You only have to write one essay. What makes evidence specific? Think of think of evidence as just like key terms, right? Like, you know, like in your textbook when some words are bolded, that's evidence. Right? If you were if you're if you were writing a a textbook, your evidence points would be bolded, right? It would almost have little like definitions at the bottom, like that. Do you get a rubric? Oh wait, will they all be the same still just different time periods? Yes. They will all be the exact same skill, just different, same skill and same theme. So all three could be economic or political or social or whatever, and you'll get just the time period will change so you can use different evidence points, essentially. Um, if we don't have time to do the LEQ, should we still do the intro? Hell yeah. Like, you should write until they tell you to put your pencil down. Um, you know, like, if you look up, first of all, you should... You should have time for the LEQ. The, the DBQ should not take you more than, you know, after an hour of the DBQ, wherever you're at, pause, do some of the LEQ. But but if you can at least get the context and the thesis, maybe like a couple of other points, you should. How do you get two analysis points on the LEQ? So you have to, one analysis point is about actually using a skill to prove your point. So you're using causation, you're using comparison, and you're setting up your paragraphs like that. So um, comparison is a good example because you, you want each paragraph to be comparative. So you have like a paragraph about similarities that isn't just about China or just about India, it's comparing the two. And by doing that, that's earning you an analysis point. Your second analysis point is complexity, which is the same type of point as the DBQ. Um, the LEQ is last and it is 15%. So I guess technically it's the least important. Sure. Um, if you're talking about the Great Schism, would an evidence point come from talking about Caesaropapism and Eastern Orthodoxy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for sure. For the practice one, I kind of just BS my way through it. If you don't remember certain specifics, should you just try to write? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, 
Right. So these are these two questions. If we don't know much evidence about the prompt, should we guess our best? If you know, do your best. You know, look at the time period. Let yourself brainstorm even beyond the prompt. Just like, what do you even remember about that time period? Can you come up with any empires, any people, any, um, you know, events, any important things that you can remember happening? And then does it connect at all? Um, and that would be, yeah. Uh, my teacher said to start setting up the LAQ before we start the DBQ. No, don't do that. I wouldn't do that. I would just go into the DBQ. Look at. Don't even look at the LEQ because you're going to be confused. I mean, I know you're going to want to look at it just to see it, um, and that's fine. But don't spend time on it. Do the DBQ first. Um, Kendall, you don't. The only thing you pick is the prompt that you write on the LEQ. Um, so you're going to be given three options for the LEQ, and you get to choose one. But for the DBQ, there's no choice. You have to do the one that's given. For the SAQs, two of them are mandatory, and the other two you get to choose between them. Um, what should the conclusion of the LEQ, LEQ be about? So for conclusions, the only thing you need to do is to restate your thesis. You really don't need to do anything other than that. Um, my teacher said that she would recommend doing the, the DBQ. What? Yeah, do the DBQ first. The DBQ is worth more. Yeah, so the order of everything is multiple choice, short answer, DBQ, LEQ. That's the order of them. Can I just do no conclusion? Yeah, you don't have to do a conclusion. Um, the only thing that you should do in the conclusion, though, is restate your thesis. Because if you don't, if you write an incorrect thesis in your intro, the first thing the reader is going to do is to flip back to your conclusion to see if you did it right there. And so if you write a new, restate your thesis in a better way, um, you might have a chance of getting that point if you missed it. So it's worth it. Um, what if you run out of time? If you see like one point coming up or one minute and you're like, ah, I, yeah, I would just start bullet pointing. It's the best you can do. Like get something down on paper as fast as you can. Um, and then be done. Is it good to have an introduction and a conclusion? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't. What are the different ways to get the complexity point? Read, on, read them on the rubric. So if you just Google AP history rubric, it's the first thing that pops up. Um, and you, there's like several, but a lot of them aren't really explained. Um, I mean, basically your two ways that I would focus on are synthesis, or like counter argument. Yeah, but by counter argument here, I mean like if you're arguing that that it was in effect, then you can argue that it wasn't in effect, right? Um, or if you're arguing that it's different, you can show a paragraph to show that it, how it was similar. Just give like that other piece. Mm, nuance, yeah. Any other questions about the LEQ? This isn't the last time that you'll be able to ask me questions about this stuff. On Wednesday night, I'll also be live taking last minute questions as well. So you don't have to feel like you can, you don't have to feel like, I, I don't know what to ask. I wanna make sure I get all asked. Um, if you don't think you can do synthesis before a body paragraph, should you do the complexity paragraph at the end? Um, you should just do the complexity paragraph somewhere. So, you know, if you can do it earlier rather than later, great, be done with it. Synthesis is showing that the same thing happened in a different time or a different place. So you're just, you're being able to argue like, this is not the only time in history that this development has happened. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pause there. So tomorrow night, I'll, I'm going to be live for, we're going to go much longer tomorrow night. It's going to be about two hours. Um, it might even go a little over that. Uh, what I'm going to do inside of the survival kit that I think you have access to, we're going to be doing um, a whole chart together, organizing key terms by spice and by time period. And then I'm also going to show you a slide for every 
like for every time period I have um, like a comparison slide of like possible things you could be asked to compare, possible things you could be asked to show causes about or effects about. So tomorrow we're just gonna kind of cover all of it. Um, in the Kahoot session tonight, I'm gonna be talking about getting access to it because it, tomorrow night is $5 to join. You guys already have access, okay? So you don't have to worry about, like you already have access. You don't, you're not paying any extra for it. Um, it, it comes with, it's, it is what it is. Uh, no, we'll be at, we'll do eight to 10. So um, even though the chat and the next one will be kind of crazy, um, if you, you know, when I'm talking about it, you can kind of point out that it's, it's cool. It's something cool to do. You can help me out. Um, and so we'll try to do some like peer pressure to get others to join. Whew. All right, I'm gonna go jump over. Let's see, let me just check, see how many people are signed up now. Let me just refresh. Whole, you guys, there's 620 people registered for this Kahoot. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy. Um, you're still unable to access the links for the live reviews. What do you mean you're here? Okay. So from Kahoot is bit.ly slash uh, Kahoot 18. This is super late. Do you think the DBQ you did earlier, you could reference earlier feminist movements for complexity? Yes. Um, all right, uh, Lucia or Lucia, email me so that I can give you the correct links, okay? All right, you guys, I'm out. I gotta go, I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye.